Joining us now is Andrew Campbell. He's an expert in uh, cyber psychology and a senior lecturer in the Faculty of Health Science at the University of Sydney. Andrew, tell me, are different people uh, treated differently for saying almost the same thing on social media based on what they believe or their gender or, or their race? Well, it's not so much about different people being treated differently. It's about the different types of trollers. There's, there's actually many different ways that people will come at you. So there'll be those who want to have discourse. They actually, they might be very angry with your point of view, but they'll try and question you to sort of get a response back, even if it's a heated response. And then there's others who are simply there to attack. And then there's certainly those who are actually to provoke. They enjoy actually controlling the situation. And they don't really want any discourse at all. They just want a reaction. So when we look at people engaging with you, there's certainly those that will go after women harder than men, and those that will go after minorities, and those will go after different religious ideologies and so on. But ultimately, the troll of whoever they are is trying to elicit a response under their terms. Okay, so so what what might account for the fact that Will can come on the program, and and, and express reservations about the the immigration system in Australia, let's say, mild though they they, they mm. might be, as he says, and yet Nyadol says, well, you know, you you the African gangs. Um, uh, discourse is, is you know, uninformed and inaccurate. What accounts for, do you think, the difference in those two responses? It, it, definitely in this situation here we've got a gender difference and we've got a racial difference and we have a topic here that is definitely a lived experience versus commentary in some ways. Yeah. And so you, you're attracting different groups to those commentaries based on who's talking. And that, that will bring up a troll group. Yeah. Well, when I've talked about immigration, when I've talked about, um, you know, African gang stuff, the things I, I get that I think really connect to the notion of race in this instance is the fact that, m actually, like Jackie, I don't care if you disagree with my position, right. and I don't care if you disagree with it passionately, because I have passionate opinions. I expect people to also, you know, strongly defend their position. But I hardly actually get substantial disagreement. What I get is, get out of this country, you're mm -hmm. ungrateful. The mere act of actually having a voice, um, to, which to me is an exercise of my rights as a citizen, mm -hmm. assuming that I'm a worthy citizen like anybody else, black or white, and that I can comment on topics about this country, um, the act of just doing that um, means that people then say things like, get out of this country, you ungrateful black bee. Um, because they, they see the, 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 the criticism of a political or a policy decision um, from my migration history. You know, I, I am not white, therefore, you know, I'm not grateful about, to, about in, you know, to be here in this country. So it's an issue of legitimacy. It is. You don't I'm have a right to, to speak? Precisely. Because uh, you have been Australian long enough, because yeah. of the colour of your skin, because of your gender, which one? All because of them. because I, I think mainly because, you know, I was a refugee and you came to this country and the country that you came from is a place of war. What do you have to complain about in this country? Uh -huh. You've been given an opportunity to be in this country and you should be grateful. And the, the idea of criticism that you could actually engage in constructive criticism in your new country mm. um, is, is not accepted. So a lot of this criticism, particularly on immigration, come from a position of feeling that people who look like me are not Australian enough. But let's be, let's be plain about this, Andrew. Do you think uh, if Nyadol had come uh, as a, a white-skinned English person or New Zealander, she would have the same issues of people pushing back against legitimacy? You don't have a right to speak. There would she still wouldn't. be the issues of pushback. There's no question mm. about that. But, that would, but, but those issues would be tempered differently. So there is definitely, a, as I was saying before, there's, there's troll groups, and those troll groups will decide to latch onto a particular person or topic because of that person and topic, but if it was, if it was a deliber deliberated by a different person, then they would actually temper the way they'd troll that person. And what person. does that mean? That... By temper, I mean is that they'd actually either be more aggressive or less aggressive based on who the person is. Okay, so do you, I mean, kind of hand on heart, do you genuinely think, every time Yadol comes on, there's this group of people who say, go back to where you come from, and somebody comes on with an English accent, do you, are they likely to get go back to where you come from? A South Probably. African accent, I, I a can't Dutch say accent. for certain, but I, I would say based on the literature we have yes. of trolling and the way we look at personality types and also the issues that elicit the troll, then yes, it is. there is probably a, a stereotype based on the racial uh, profile. Uh, Jackie, can I ask you, was there a sense that um, you having a political opinion, whatever it was, was illegitimate because you're a working class woman who wasn't a professional polished politician. Oh, yeah, there's no doubts about that. I got a lot of criticism from that, and it wasn't even just trolling. I mean, I got that from journalists, you know. So 
it's, it's, well, it's an infection, you know, it goes from one to the next. It's not just the trolls that are doing this, it's also journalists out there as well feeding into it um, that don't help the matter. So, I mean, if you've got, like my mother said, if you've got nothing nice to say, then shut up and don't say it at all. And we are turning into a country of, racists. Let's, of racism, let's, let's be honest about that. Um, you know, it seems to be getting worse. We don't seem to be getting... People say, well, you know what, we've become a, a great country of multiculturalism, but I can tell you what, I'm not feeling the love with multiculturalism over the last few years in this country, and nobody wants to talk about that, but it's going to end up very untidy. We can go on about the, the migrants and whether 170 or thousand is too many. I believe it's too many. I'm more worried about our food security, our national security, our water security, the price of power we're paying, and obviously job security. So, you know, um, but there's, there is trolls out there, and like I said, the best way to deal with trolls is to bump them off your social media and not to let them back in again. Let them go troll somebody else, because uh, these people are usually nasty pasties and they don't have a life, and quite frankly, I've got better things to deal with than dealing with trolls. I don't answer them back, I don't do anything, I don't give them any ammunition, and I would suggest that everybody else do the same. Well, that's interesting what Jackie's saying, that somehow expressing these sorts of you know, highly racially offensive views uh, uh, online and certainly, um, as we've seen uh, in other places this week, has become more acceptable. Do you, do you, do you agree with that? Uh, I mean, I think the, the internet, um, especially, I mean, I think Twitter is like um, one of the worst offenders. I mean, look, there, are, there caused, are other nasty Has it caused some of... debate? Has it caused oh, definitely. some debate? Uh, like the, the internet, I think, through anonymity, allows a coarsening of debate. I mean, you used to have it back in the pamphlet age, though, so I'm a little bit wary about, you know, there was this golden time when everyone would, you know, respectfully come together and have this high, you know, intelligent exchange of opinions. That's not really true. Like, if you go back to the, you know, the uh, 18th century, in anonymous pamphlets, you know, Benjamin Franklin was slagging off whichever founding father he didn't like and whatever in his almanac. Um, so there's been anonymous trolling for a long time, but the internet allows it on a scale and allows everyone to do it because everyone can self-publish in, you know, like never before. So, I mean, I think Twitter's become... I, like, I'm surprised a, a lot of people spend so much time on Twitter. I find it such a... If I, if I wasn't a journalist, I wouldn't ever go on there. I only use it to, you know, try to promote oh, yeah. my own stuff or my colleagues' stuff because we're in a... You know, in a news business, but mm. it's a, tar a terrible you, place to exchange uh, ideas. I find. Jackie, I find. Jackie, do you know? Do you know what's even worse though is when you've got a president of the United States coming out and calling. What did he call back that uh, woman here the last few days? Was it a dog or low down or something mm. like that? I mm. mean, these are the people that we're supposed to be looking up to, and this is a bloke going on and, and a berating a beautiful looking woman because he didn't like what she had to say and the language he used against her uh, was unsatisfactory. As a matter of fact, I thought it was morally um, incorrect what he did and what he said. So when you've got leaders like Trump out there and speaking about women the way he does and he's getting worse at it, what do you expect? Everybody thinks that's just normal behaviour. They can, uh, you know, they can react in the same manner and that's what you're getting. If it's good enough for the top echelon to get it, then everyone else can do it as well. Mm. And that's exactly where society's heading. Hmm. Well, the occasional host of the drum, Peter Van Onselen, tweeted this last night. There have been plenty of criticisms he wrote of Sky News presenter Paul Murray I've been reading on social media when he pointed out Hitler was a fascist, not a socialist. And then Peter said Nazism is national socialism, which is considered a branch of socialism. Well, now that's very much a disputed view and perhaps not what you'd expect to hear from a professor of politics. Peter was subsequently ratioed, a Twitter term for when the number of replies vastly outweighs the number of retweets or likes and often an indicator of an unpopular opinion. He later complained about the, quote, vile abuse he received. I'm no longer using Twitter, he wrote, for more than posts because of the vile abuse I've received that has stunned me. Uh, and there was... Uh, let me... Oh, yes, we've got the other ones on the screen. Uh, we have... If you think that's vile abuse, you need to get out more, said Dingbat. Uh, you utter sook, wrote uh, Ian Sison. And somebody else said, you're mad... You're a mad tit, I think. You made a tit of yourself. <laughs> Apologise and move on. OK, so, Andrew, this is a really interesting point. All these people were saying to Peter Van Alselen, you're an idiot. Hitler was a fascist, he wasn't a socialist. You're wrong. And, and not 20 people said it, but 1,000 people said it. So his phone would have been going, gabing, 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 gabing. 
Is that trolling or is that disagreement? It's, it's a fine line. It's, that's all I can say, it's a fine line. In this instance, if there's people saying, you're wrong, it's this, then that, in a sense, is a discussion. It's a case of, let's debate it. If it's a case of, no, I'm going to sling insults at you and I'm not looking for a response, that's trolling. So, essentially, what we're looking at for troller to, to, to succeed is to get a rise out of you to a point of either, A, you fight back, or, B, you disconnect. And that's what exactly happened. So he disconnected? He disconnected. So was he trolled? I think there was definitely trolling aspects, but as you said yourself, there could have been thousands. He probably didn't read all of them. He just probably thought, there's a negative theme here. I don't want to deal with it. I'm going to disconnect. What do you think? I mean, and by the way, he's written a newspaper article about it, so he has a platform to hmm. make you know, make his points tomorrow. What do you think, Nana? That's actually quite interesting. And it goes back to the point um, you made before about um, just using Twitter for, for work. Well, if you actually come from, say, a minority group or groups that don't generally have the platform or you're not a journalist, Twitter has this ability to be able to, you know, allow you to speak at a much more broader platform. Mm -hmm. It levels, to some degree, the gap between, uh -huh. you know, someone who's a journalist and someone who can go and write an article about it and me trying to pull up someone who is bullying or trolling me on Twitter that actually might be, in fact, a journalist or someone, other person who is, who is relatively po powerful. Um, so, you know, it, it's good that he has a platform to go and write about, but not all of us have that kind of platform to draw in more, mm. more audience. And, and, I mean, when you contrast that with someone like yourself, um, uh, with Shen from Get Up, who we saw at the beginning of the show, with Van Batham, uh, they have to steal themselves. I've seen some women leave yeah. the studio. Uh, you know, come and have a cup of tea with me because this is going to be awful. This is going to be awful. This, mm -hmm. this. Um, uh, can you really say that both are being trolled, or, or is it silly to compare trolls? Um, I, 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 I think you know, and I remember coming across a, a you know a video that seemed to be well researched. Someone commenting about that if you are from, if you're a woman and a woman from a minority group, you actually get quite more intense trolling than other than other people. So I can see why someone like Shane won't, won't want to be on Twitter. And I've questioned the fact whether it's useful to be on Twitter. Like, I mean, almost every month I think, um, this is it, I'm out. Mm. Um, because like Jackie also said, it really takes a lot from your self-esteem. It takes a lot from your ability to just concentrate and go on your, your life as you wish to. It makes you doubt your own voice. Now, you know, every time the, an opportunity is presented to you to speak publicly on something, you've got to question whether this would be it, you know. And there are instances where I have left an interview and went back home and thought, OK, now it's time to look at my security settings. You know, do I change my password? You know, things that I won't think about in a, in a particular context, because I don't want, you know, which has happened to some women, my email getting hacked and waking up to vile threats of rape threats and all that. I don't want to deal with that. And I've even begun to, which is a generally nice thing to do, uh, leaving my phone downstairs. Because sometimes you wake up and the first thing you do is pick up your phone. Mm. And sometimes you go on Twitter and you find something that is so hurtful that it ruins your whole day. Mm. <laughs> you know, so try to give myself that bit of a gut. It really influences your behavior um, if you want to insist on having a voice. And I suppose if you don't want to do that anymore, then you leave. Mm. You do, you, do you use airplane mode on your phone or do you keep it on the whole time? I'll keep it on. Oh, see, that's what, see, I use airplane mode at 9.30 at night. I put it on that and I don't have it on until I wake, well, until I'm sort of ready to engage with that stuff. So mm. maybe 7 a.m. or something in the morning. I find that so wonderful. It's like a safety oh, blanket think... of, you know. Jackie? I think if you didn't need social media, you wouldn't be playing on it. It's as simple as that. I sure And you think politicians need it, and that's why you were on it. Years ago. Yeah. Yeah, well, we do, because we, we run on the smell of an oily rag, obviously, to keep ourselves going. So when I get a press release out, it goes out on Twitter uh, or, or on my Facebook or both, and that's how I feed it out. We've got to do this on the cheap, so a lot of our stuff does go out on social media. So the bigger, more people I have following me in the country on social media, the bigger gain it is for me to get my message a point, because we just don't have millions of dollars, because we don't take those big okay. political donations, and we've got real-time disclosure. Let, so let, it shuts let me, me ask down, you, Jackie, though. If I, if I wasn't yeah. in the job, yeah. I wouldn't be on it. Yeah. Can, can I ask you one thing about Peter Van Onselen? OK, if, if ten people disagree with you on Twitter, you wouldn't say that you'd been trolled, would you? 
No, as long as it was control, as long as they weren't just f words everywhere and yeah. calling me every name under the sun. If it was actually constructive criticism, yeah. then I look at that so I can get what other, how other people are feeling. And I still may not agree with them, but it'll be yeah. like, oh, actually, yeah, actually, I'm starting to feel they're hurt a little bit now. They're putting it in words, so it can be very, very helpful as long as it's constructive criticism. And then once and you it's get, not just calling is, me every name under the sun. And, and is there a point? Do you think this is an interesting point that you get to a thousand people? telling you your point of view is stupid and you're an idiot. Is that trolling? No, because there has been times where, like I've said, that we haven't quite got our message across properly and it's gone a bit haywire. So by using that social media after you've got 50 or 60 people make their point or within the hour, you can go in there and just clear a few things up. Mm. So um, that's that's been a very good method for me to use. Okay. Um, that's a very yeah, interesting. If, if, if you're getting, listen, I can tell you, now, if I'm getting a 70% hit, I know that's a good day. But if I'm getting 50-50, I've really got to have a look at it and I'm probably not quite getting it right or I'm missing something or it's because of my stance and my ideology. Take your pick. Very, very, very interesting. Before we finish on this topic, Nella, why do you, when we ring you up and say, come on, come on the drum, we'll, you know... We'll, we'll, we'll give you a glass of water. We, we don't pay any of our panellists. Um, and, you know, you could brace yourself for all you that. You didn't even get that. What's yeah, going did, on? You didn't get, sorry, Jackie didn't get the water. We'll fix that. We'll get I had to bring water. you my own water. Oh, that's disgraceful. <laughs> Beautiful Tasmanian water. Why do you do it, Yadol? Why don't you come it's on? It's Tasmanian water. Um, it's, I think it's important to have diverse opinions um, uh, from different groups of people. Um, engage in our public discourse. I think it's an important thing. And I live in a country, thankfully, that despite the trolling, at least presents itself, you know, as democratic and respect freedoms of freedom of speech. Now that's not something you would get in, say for example, South Sudan. And and it's so so it's a right that I'm exercising um, as an Australian citizen. And I don't want my voice to be taken away by fear. And it was a really good advice that I got from you know, uh, uh, the senior partner at the firm I work for, where he said, you do this if you want to do it, but don't let people make you afraid um, to speak up. And so I ask myself that question when, whenever I get an opportunity and I'm kind of a bit um, concerned about the reaction, is to ask myself, am I actually saying no because I have things to do that are reasonable, or am I saying no because I'm afraid? Because mm. that's another, th I think, aim of this trolling, is to make you so afraid that you become silent, you disconnect, you um, not necessarily run away, but you realise that this is just too much for you to deal with. And I don't want that. I also hate bullies. You yeah. know, I just generally hate bullies. <laughs> and if someone is going to try and sort of try and punch me down into a position by being racist or ignorant, uh, I'm not going to allow them to win if I can. Mm. Nevertheless, she persisted. Nevertheless. <laughs> You know, like, like the ring. <laughs> the bracelet. <laughs> the bracelet, bracelet thing. nevertheless, she persisted. Thanks so much for coming in, Andrew. Pleasure. I do appreciate it. Our guest, Dr Andrew Campbell, cyber psychology expert at the University of Sydney.